Alright my YouTube family, welcome back to the Gaming Brigade, and as I try to do every Sunday my fellow descendants, today I'm going to take a few moments, go over some of the things that took place in the game this week, and as always, try to answer some of the questions you've sent the channel as well. We're going to jump right into the details, and if you happen to enjoy this, do me a favor and hit that like button, it truly helps the channel out, and if you want to stay up to speed on all things The First Descendant, feel free to hit that subscribe or join button as well. Now the first thing I'd like to address is something that took place the other day where the game introduced a patch where they were going to restore certain missing ultimate weapons, and you can see they said the following. In Hotfix 1.1.2, as the filter option had been changed to exclude junk filter, we are seeing some accidental cases of dismantling ultimate weapons. To prevent such mistakes, we temporarily fix settings not to allow dismantling for ultimate weapons, and the official patch regarding such issue will be set in Hotfix 1.1.3. After the Hotfix 1.1.3, ultimate weapons will be automatically registered as attached items, and we will make modifications to let ultimate weapons not be selected as designated all as junk. He finishes off by saying for those who accidentally dismantled their ultimate weapons between the 1.1.2 update and the 1.1.2 B update, we will receive store the dismantled weapons via mail without needing an additional request. We appreciate your understanding and patience while it may take time for restoration. Now that does bring me to a question a lot of you sent the channel and that is for people who accidentally deleted items a while back. You're wondering if you can get those back as well? The answer is no, it is just for the most recent update. So once again my friends, as I've said before, you need to take your time when you're doing farming. Mark things as a favorite. It takes a second to do because I can promise you moving forward. The game is not going to continue the pattern of restoring ultimate weapons that you've accidentally deleted. You do not want to lose something that probably took you a lifetime to finally pick up. Please stop making that mistake. Now at this point, we are now going to go over some of the highlights of all of the information that we received this week. We have new daily challenges. They introduced a bunch of fixes as well. Let's jump right into it. Now starting with the daily challenges, you can see they said the following. The new events are live, complete daily tasks and earn rewards, plus enjoy 50% weapon proficiency boost in infiltration operations. Now first of all, we're going to start with the daily task rewards, and they're pretty decent ones. I mean, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, but reading from left to right, you can see that completing four regional missions on normal or hard is going to get you 100,000 Kuiper Shards. Complete two void intercept battles, you're going to get 100,000 Kuiper Shards as well. Completing one research is going to get you to send an XP gain of 30% for 5 hours. And finally, we have complete one infiltration operation, again on normal or hard difficulty, is going to get you 20 fine adjustment control access. At the bottom of the page, it shows you exactly where you need to go to find all this information, which now takes us to the in-game buffs. And as you can see on screen, my friends, we are getting a 50% weapon proficiency boost in infiltration operations. Again, this is trying to get people to jump into that game mode. So in my opinion, for those of you out there who have been trying to level up certain weapons, now is the perfect time to jump into the game. Please let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I will do my best to get back to you as quick as I can. Next, my friends, I'd like to talk about something we have been discussing at the channel for the last few weeks, and that is the introduction of a public test realm. You can see on screen the first mention of a PTR-like system was on August 30th, and that is when Nexon posted their dev notes number 13, where the game director said, Furthermore, we will improve our development process to meet the expectations of our players in future updates. We are considering having an FGT, focus group testing, after development is completed, or inviting players to gather feedback before the update is released and incorporating that feedback into the final release. They continue by saying, furthermore, in a recent interview with the head of Nexon's publishing department on September 8th, the interviewer finishes with Nexon plans to introduce a test server for the first descendant soon, where they can check user feedback before official updates. Now, as of my recording this video, we do not have a date yet on when we can expect to see the PTR introduced. I have a feeling it's going to be at the very end of September. Obviously, once I have that information, I will bring it to you right away. Because in my opinion, and please let me know your thoughts, I think the game is reacting to what to took place after the start of season one because the bottom line is this typically we all know when a season begins that is when you're supposed to see more players jump into the game but unfortunately the numbers have been slowly declining ever since season one began now for the record we're sitting at around 31,000 players on steam as of my recording this video when you add console players that number's probably at least doubled so there happen to be a lot of people still playing this game and not only that it's free to play you know for me it's very simple i bought a few things in the game have not spent a lot of money i think i've spent 
spent maybe 20 or 30 bucks. I'm a casual player. I have a few hours here, a few hours there. So for a player like myself, I will never run out of things to look for in this game, which means I still have that desire to log in on a daily basis. But for other players out there, let's say you've been trying to farm for something, you've done something hundreds of times, you have not had any luck whatsoever. You are now starting to run into player fatigue because you're tired of doing the same damn thing over and over again without getting the result that you're looking for. And at the same time, we have a lot of people out there who have had great success in finding certain things, but honestly, they're not enjoying the gameplay. And one thing you've heard me say numerous times is that I've chosen to give this game until the end of season two because I want to make sure it has enough time to really, you know, start to gain stride. I think we are going to continue to see improvements in this game. For me, it's free to play. It costs me nothing whatsoever to jump in anytime I want. But more importantly, for me at least, the game is still a shit ton of fun. Like I happen to be enjoying my gameplay. Let me know your thoughts, my friends. Now you can also see on screen that the game introduced Hotfix 1.1.2. They implemented a ton of gameplay improvements. We have some buffs. We have some nerfs. Now, I'm not going to read all of these word for word. However, I will leave a link to them in the video description down below. However, I would like to take a moment and go over the director's comments. You can see he said the dev team is aware of the feedback regarding aim assist and has improved the feature to further enhance the console player experience. Previous Previously, the aim assist feature made delicate control difficult as the aim automatically turns towards a nearby monster or focuses on the enemy's torso when you want to attack their weak points. With this improvement, the players with controllers will now have more control over their aiming while new players are given appropriate assistance. You can see he then talks about new rewards that have been added to the battle pass. He says to meet the community's expectations for further improving the value of the battle pass rewards. We temporarily added a page 13 for the season one battle pass while providing crystallization catalysts and energy activators as the rewards. Even if you have already reached season level 96, you still receive the additional rewards on page 13. The dev team is working hard to incorporate feedback from the community to further improve the game and provide more value to players. Based on the feedback we have received during the preseason, we have improved the season one battle pass to make it easier to achieve weekly and seasonal missions. We appreciate your continued interest in the Season 1 Battle Pass along with the Battle Supply Shop where you can receive free rewards. Now please do me a favor. If you happen to own the Battle Pass, what are your thoughts on the rewards? I've heard from a lot of people saying that it is much easier to achieve certain accomplishments in the Battle Pass now, but the rewards really aren't that great. I'd love to hear your thoughts, my friends. Last but not least today, I'd like to mention a few of the changes that the game introduced. You can now immediately choose a selectable reward before you begin hard infiltration operations. The weapon list in Customize Now displays the status of the skins for each weapon. At the library, the items obtained from research are also displayed in the acquisition info. You can now check tool tips from the amorphous materials now. Finally, changing firing mode in the gameplay settings is now enabled by default. Hope this helped you out my friends and as always questions comments or feedback please let me know and i will do my best to get back to you as quick as i can now as i start to wrap this video up it's also important to mention that the game introduced a bunch of bug fixes earlier as well i'm going to leave a link to all of them in the video description but i do want to go over a few highlights really quick First of all, they fixed an issue where it automatically switched to the tracked items tab upon entering the research screen if there are completed or in progress research items. They fixed an issue where trying to equip a module when the socket type is changed could incorrectly display accumulated applied values. Moving on to Descendants and Ultimate Weapons, they fixed an issue where the effect remains if Ajax's barrier is immediately destroyed at the time it is created. Fixed an issue where Kingsguard Lance blocked enemy projectiles. And finally, you can see in regard to Ultimate Weapons, they improved the base performance and unique ability of the Ultimate Weapon Wave of Light, which is the Scout Rifle, Kingsguard Lance, which is the Beam Rifle, Executor Shotgun, Peacemaker Hand Cannon, and the Excava Assault Rifle. I truly believe this is just the beginning of more improvements they are going to continue to make. And once again, remember my friends, October 10th, when we finally hit that second phase of Season 1, that's when we're going to be getting a lot of things that people are really waiting for. We know initially, you know, Season 1 was supposed to be broken up into three phases, they cut it down to two. And as we look ahead to that Week 7 update, you can see it is going to bring us a Void Intercept Battle, Ultimate Weapons, External Components, Descendants Exclusive Spawn, Ultimate Frenia, Hard Mode Infiltration, Modification Modules, Ultimate Modules, and more including a new vendor. I think the future looks really good, my friends. And on that note, I want to take a moment as always and thank you all for your incredible support of this channel. I sincerely appreciate the privilege of your time. Please let me know of any questions you may have. And as I mentioned at the end of every one of these, take care of yourselves, be kind to each other, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks again, everyone.